Hey everybody, it's me, Arthur Cade, and I've got the beautiful Miss Universe, Pia Wurzbach, joining me behind the velvet rope. We're going to talk all about her philanthropic work, winning Miss Universe, and what's ahead. So get ready for a great night behind the velvet rope. Hey everyone, it's me, Arthur Cade. So Pia, or should I say, AKA Miss Universe, congratulations. You've had a pretty uneventful month, haven't you? It's been pretty cool, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm very excited. So talk to me, you Miss Universe. I mean, talk about, when you talk about beauty pageants, it doesn't get much better than that. Walk me through what it's been like, you've been in New York all week, what it's been like for you since winning the title. Well, it's my first time here in New York and it's been great. I've always imagined what it would be like to live here in new york to stay here in the miss universe apartment and now i'm finally here i love the city it's really nice the food's great and the people are very warm and friendly although it's quite chilly <laughs> and also i love the shopping oh i think the shopping's what's gonna kill me here <laughs> and the broadway shows i've seen kinky boots and uh finding neverland and soon i want to see when I find the time, Allegiance and The Lion King, since I'm a big Disney fan. I love it. When you win a title, obviously this is, from a, a beauty pageant standpoint, it's like winning the championship. Mm -hmm. When you win that title, what is that moment like for you? Obviously your moment was quite different than anybody else's moment, but when you finally knew that you were Miss Universe, what's going through your head? Actually, to me, I'm already thinking about the work and then the next thing I'm going to do the next day and the things I want to accomplish as Miss Universe. I got to uh, really get a... F uh, I, I had my moment where I was like, okay, thank, thank God I won. I'm so happy. But also to me, it was like work straight away. I was thinking about the things I want to do, the things I want to see, the things I want to accomplish as Miss Universe. So to me... I won already, but I'm already thinking about the next step and the next step and the next. It's a perfect lead in. What do you want to accomplish? What is that work over the next year for you? Well, I'm hoping there's going to be a lot of traveling because I'm looking shopping. forward. Back to <laughs> I'm the shopping. Looking forward to that. And as well as um, uh, using, well, now that we have so much attention from the viewers and a lot of people, I want to use that for our benefit by talking more about uh, HIV awareness and uh, our causes like uh, relief operations and cyberbullying. These are some of the things I want to work on as aside from the organizations we'll be working with as Miss Universe. Was this something that was important to you growing up? Did you say, okay, I love the beauty pageant world. I want to compete. But if I do end up being successful, I do want to make a difference. Was that important to you early on? Yeah, I mean, that's the whole point in pageants, isn't it? I know um, we're, we're joining a competition and it's, there's going to be the final show, a final night. But what people don't see is it, the work doesn't end after the night. It actually starts there because whoever wins has a whole year of work and philanthropy. So I, that's the thing that I don't think a lot of people know. I remember when Manny Pacquiao was in his prime mm -hmm. and the reception he would get in the Philippines. The Philippines is a country that loves people who are successful globally. Yes. What was the reaction in your home country when you became Miss Universe? Wow. Um, I heard that <laughs> everybody was so happy. Everybody was celebrating. It was talked about on TV, on every show, in the news, front page in the newspaper. I mean, even all the the brands and the ads, they all had some sort of con congratulations or tribute for me that day. So it was crazy. Um, like you said, yeah, you're right. Uh, in the Philippines, it really is a big deal when they see their fellow country countrymen do well in an international in the international scene in the international arena because it's inspiring. It gives them hope. That's why I think boxing beauty pageants are huge in the philippines did you walk into the competition thinking was there a confidence hey i could win this or i mean i would be like the guy i'd be like i'm gonna win this like i would be telling people backstage or were you like super humble like oh we'll see what happens i 
I always had that confidence in me that I came there to to win. That that was my goal. And but I of course I wasn't, you know, trying to um you should, be, been, you should have been backstage psyching everybody out like you're gonna lose, you're gonna lose. Oh no, no. <laughs> I, I I wasn't like that. But and Oh, thank God I wasn't like that because the girls had to vote for me during the pageant as well. I, if you watched it, the six judge were the other girls. So whoever was left in the top three, the girls who are behind us, they get to choose who they want to be Miss Universe. So now it's in their hands. So this is another twist that they added for the pageant this year or last year. So... Yeah, I was I was pretty nice to, <laughs> to them. Although I had that that confidence where I was prepared. I prepared for it for a long time. I was under a lot of pressure to win as well from my country and that all helped in motivating me to to getting the crown. I was watching Miss Universe that night and there was also a football game on at the same time. Oh yeah. So I'm flipping back and forth and they announced Miss Columbia as the winner. So I flip over back to the football game. I'm like, okay, cool, that's who we'll be interviewing when she's in New York. I, for some reason, flick back and I see your face and obviously the whole Steve Harvey thing happens. I know you've been asking this, been asked all week and I, I, I'm so curious. I didn't see any other interviews you did specifically because I wanted the answer for me to be kind of organic. Okay. What was that moment like? Walk me through, you know, just everything that was going on in your mind, what's going on on the stage. I'm dying. Like, what was it like there? It was a big surprise, of course. Nobody was expecting that to happen, but it was a mistake, I understand. It's live television, but it was so exciting for me because, of course, I wanted to win, just <laughs> like everybody else. I mean, I was under a lot of pressure from my fellow countrymen, and we've been doing so well in the past couple of years uh, in Miss Universe. We've always landed up in the top five, and I didn't want to be the one to break that streak. <laughs> it was, I, to me, it, it's either win or you know like or don't return to the <laughs> or immigrate to to, immigrate to the united states <laughs> so um yeah there was i was under a lot of pressure but it was okay it, it all worked out in the end so i was super excited i i might not have gotten the traditional crowning moment that every miss universe usually have has but i i still won so can't complain. <laughs> You're also, that I know, the first Miss Universe that can say, hey, I experienced both and I experienced what it was like to be runner-up. What was it like for you when you thought you were runner-up? Was What was the mentality like at that moment? When you compete for Miss Universe and you know you're competing against 79 other beautiful women who also won in their national pageants, the only thing you can hope for is you make your country proud because you can prepare for it for such a long time but that final result is out of your hands. So when I was called first runner up, I was thinking almost there, almost there. But I was walking past the audience who just happened to be Filipino. Um, they were all you know, saying to me, we're so proud of you, congratulations. And I was thinking to myself, okay, that's a relief. Okay, at least I made them proud. At least you know, nobody has any uh, ill feelings or nobody's bitter or anything. We're all happy to make it that far in Miss Universe. But of course, when I was called the winner instead, well, I was even more happy. And I was <laughs> saying to myself, okay, looks like I'm not going home after all. Not just yet. This is going to open so many doors for you, career, socially, culturally. I mean, it's it's gonna change your life. Mm -hmm. Have you started thinking about, obviously you have the next year of doing great stuff with charities and, and helping people, but have you started thinking long-term how this may impact you? Have you started thinking, hey, I'd like to do TV. I'd like to start a nonprofit. What happens after Miss Universe? Have you planned that out in your head yet? Yeah, I would love to go back to showbiz, to acting, or maybe hosting. If I get any opportunities here in the U.S., why not? I'll try, definitely try that. I'll, I can always go back home to the Philippines. I mean, we know Miss Universe is big there. So I know that I'll have... Um, I'll have I'll have opportunities there as well, but why not aim for the stars, right? <laughs> I love that. Coolest moment so far. You've I've seen you're doing all the talk shows in New York. I mean, all this great stuff. What's been the one coolest moment for you since you've gotten the crown that's just blown your mind? I was able to watch the ball drop and I arrived in uh, Times Square just about two hours before the countdown. 
So I know that it's really hard to get in because it's packed with thousands and thousands of people. But as Miss Universe, <laughs> I was able to use, you know, my street, my, your street cred. my street cred to <laughs> get a little bit closer than most uh, to where the ball was. And I was able to witness it. It was very close and uh, it was a very memorable New Year, definitely. I have a good friend who is from the Philippines as well, and he goes, her last name's Wurzbach. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? What is Wurzbach? It's German. I'm half German, half Filipina. Do you, when you look at the Philippines, and obviously you've expressed so much around this national pride, mm -hmm. does it, it does it carry such a, a sense of responsibility with that representing an, a country that you you feel that you have to do even more sometimes when you're representing a country? Does it enhance the responsibility for you? Oh yeah, definitely. Because I'm not there as Pia. I'm there as Philippines. If they wanna call my name, they shout Philippines instead of Pia. And you know, whatever I do there, right or wrong, they're not gonna say, oh Pia did this, Pia did that. They're gonna say, Philippines did this, or Philippines did that. And that's a big responsibility. I have the whole country behind me. and. But the good thing is I have the whole country behind me when I compete, so they'll be cheering me on. I just see it as motivation than anything else. We're in your apartment right now, and this is, you share this with Miss USA, Olivia, who I yeah. love. I've had her in my studio, such a sweetheart. Talk to me about, you mentioned you're doing all this stuff in New York, but having an apartment in New York, what's this experience been like so far, even though it's been for a few days, outside of the shopping and everything, but just the energy and excitement of New York. Has, does it alter your thinking in terms of what the world is all about? Well, it's very fast paced here, I can tell you that. But um, yes, I, it, it's, um, I'm in, well, there's really no place like New York. Because I went around, but my first time here, I thought it was just around this area where there are really tall buildings. <laughs> no. But then it's everywhere. A whole lot more. It's a whole lot more. And um, I understand now why people fall in love with New York and why. They visit here and they decide to live here instead. There are a lot of Filipinos here as well. Um, yeah, I, I really like I really like it here. You're gonna have the opportunity to meet so many celebrities. Mm -hmm. Who's one or two that you are like? If I could meet this person during my reign and just be starstruck, who are those one or two? Drake. Really? Yeah. I'm so disappointed by what? that answer. What? No, Drake is the best. He. Oh. He's so, no, I want I want to meet Drake. I want a picture with Drake. Please, please make it happen, Lord, please. And number two, Beyonce. Okay, the Beyonce thing I can understand. I'm like somewhere DiCaprio is going to get thrown in there, but Drake? Drake, yeah. Explain this love for Drake to me. I have to understand. I'm, I get the Drake music thing, but like I'm like, uh, the he music, wouldn't be on. music, yes, that's exactly why. I love his music. I love the lyrics. It, you know, I can relate to it. I can't it. take you seriously anymore. What? That. what? No. Like Beyonce, I get, but Drake. <laughs> so when you look forward the next couple of weeks, what would you like to see? What, what do you? What do you want to see happen for the next after this media week is over? Mm -hmm. Where do you want to see the next few weeks? What happens? I'm excited to do our charity work. I really am genuinely. I can, no, I can tell. Listen. I do this for a living. So you can tell when people are full of BS because a lot of time there's program, everybody's got programmed answers. And you'll be like, oh, I want to do this charity. And you can tell like, yeah, right. They don't even know what the charity is. I can tell you're genuinely excited about that. I'm excited to do it. I want to visit the hospitals. I want to visit schools. I want to go to sites where I like distribute the goods myself. I want to be hands on with it and experience it for myself. Um, and not just talk about it, you know, I want to be there. Also, I want to tour around, visit, you know, different parts of America, and I want to vi visit different parts of the world as well. I'm looking forward to that. I even got a camera today because <laughs> I was anticipating already that I'm going to visit a lot of places, to do a lot of things, so I need my, you know, camera with me for my memories. So, <laughs> yeah. Have you talked to Miss Columbia since the whole thing? Um, I messaged her on WhatsApp on her birthday, which also happened to be Christmas Day. Is that how people communicate? I'm so old. WhatsApp, like they don't. I, I like I Facebook people. I think I'm like so ancient. Well, be, because we have a Facebook chat of all the candidates or 
the ones who have WhatsApp. And it's easy for me to find her number from there and, you know, give her a private message. Yeah. You're awesome. I'm telling you, like, it's it's funny when you, you never know what you're going to get from interviews. Mm -hmm. And I'll always like, oh, is this person fun? And I'm like, I heard you're fun and you're freaking awesome. So oh, uh, congratulations. You. You're going to have an incredible reign. And it really is great to see how the energy you have towards the philanthropic work, because I think that's such an important of what you, part of what you do. So it's great that you're so enthusiastic about it.